we spent so long in the in the limo that we felt the enclosed even when we were outside it and and I think the idea was not to let the outside world intrude too much into the into the lives of the characters. Uh, I knew going into that film that it would be the most difficult film that I had ever worked on, simply because the the space was so restrictive, or would be. I knew it would be so restrictive that to uh, ring the changes, make one scene feel a little bit different from the preceding one, would be very hard. Fortunately, I was able to operate the camera from outside the car by remote control because I don't think there would have been any room for me, the camera, and the actors. It was really funny. I went to see David on set, and um, it was during one of the riot scenes. And we were, of course, down on the lake shore, and it's all green screen. And But he had a couple of hundred people in there for the rioters. And, and he saw me come, coming in from the back, and he went, Mike, Mike, come over. What? come on. And it's like, I kind of went over, oh, hi, David, how are you? It's great to see you again. Yeah. See all this? You're not going to hear any of this. <laughs> and I went, right. <laughs> he went, no, really. And I went, okay. So I'm here to record these people. You realize that, to use those effects tracks. And, yeah, yeah, go ahead and record them, but we'll never use them. So it was really interesting from square one, the push and pull with me. And he's, he's made allusions to it in the press a few times about how nervous I was about losing the car sounds. And uh, I wasn't really, but it was a question of where do you go with it? You know, because the car does degrade over time. There is that whole sequence where the riots happen. And so it's very subliminal, but the car is degrading and it's getting noisier in that car. So it starts off dead silent, which was a real trick for, you know, for Oris especially. And then it starts growing. But you don't notice it, you know. So by the time he's at the garage and things are going all to hell in a handbasket, the car is actually making a fair bit of noise. So it's very subtle, though, how it all worked out. And it worked out really well, I think. Yeah, it does sneak up on you. We, again, when we ran the first reel and, you know, we had a certain amount of city in there, David would kind of say, can we go quieter? Can we go quieter? And I'd look over at Mike and... And, uh, you know, Mike would start to kind of thin the herd on some material there, and we'd, uh, we'd go even quieter, and then uh, David would say, are you okay with that? And I'd say, I probably need just a little bit more here for support, you know, just to cover dialogue, because at that point, we're just sitting, you know, a lot, 99% or 100% on production dialogue and, and some ADR. So certainly for the ADR, we just need a bit of coverage. But um, it's, yeah, it is, it's challenging going quiet like that, but as Michael said, it does, it does work, and there is, there's huge power in that. And, you know, there's measured doses of the outside world when, uh, when Robert opens the limo door and walks into the cab to meet his wife. You hear the city just wham in, and I think that's one of the coolest things, that you don't get a chance to experiment with that kind of dynamic a lot. So, again, it's that rise from nothing to huge back to nothing, and uh, it's, it's just really refreshing. It's unnerving. Do that. It really puts you on edge, yeah. I think. I remember David came in to hear uh, the first reel when we played it all back, and I remember him commenting on the, the sounds that we had. We sort of played the limo with some interior perspective of the city, and uh, Mike's sitting next to me, and uh, I remember David kind of uh, makes a comment after we ran the reel, and he says, uh, Oris, it's Prousted, and uh, meaning that the entire limo was cork line, so <clears throat> ergo, we're gonna, let's go for playing, you know, very minimalist in terms of uh, sound design and stuff inside the limo. So it, it, it's, there's a power in that silence and uh, I'm really glad he took it in that direction because it allowed us to kind of explore new ground.